Hello everybody, Rope Fox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition Redstone Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a slot machine for your survival world or realm. Last week, I made this one white gambling machine that you see right here. Now, the cool thing about this is it was very quick and easy to make, and of course, the play is very simple as well. So all we do is throw in our iron ingot or whatever payment item we want to use, and let's see if we can win something. Third time's a charm? Nope. Four times. And you can definitely see this is a game of chance. Hence the name Gambling Machine. So this is what we made for last week. Now let's go ahead. Oh, there we go. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I made today. What we have here is a fully functional slot machine. We throw in our payment just like we did with the last build. The wheels spin around and if we get three gold blocks we are a winner and then a diamond block will dispense from the dropper up top now I must say that this is the first of its kind for bedrock edition I haven't seen any other builds that look quite like this so with that I am very proud of this design so let's go ahead and take a look at how it works we throw in our payment just like that this is gonna spin around and we get ourselves some awesome slot machine sounds and oh we won <laughs> we won on the first try awesome awesome so let's go ahead and take that and we'll try it once again let's see if we can win twice and you can see it in action and let's see if we can win twice in a row nope not close at all and the cool part about this like I said it is the first of its kind we are using a piston fee tape on the back side right there to rotate the blocks around and we got close but hey at least we won on our first try with that let's go ahead and jump into the build to make your own slot machine for bedrock edition you are going to need a 7x9 area and you will also need 11 blocks in height with the floor being the sixth block up so let's take a look from the bottom we go one two three four five the floor level is going to be on the sixth block and again you are going to go up to 11 blocks in height with that let's go ahead and take a look at our supplies and there we go there are all the supplies we'll need for today's build and because this is a bigger build we are going to need a lot more resources than usual but let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so we have nine pistons six sticky pistons 12 comparators 17 repeaters seven hoppers six droppers and those are droppers not dispensers four observers 40 redstone dust one redstone torch four note blocks a chest your building blocks six stair blocks for decoration 15 glass blocks seven gold blocks three emerald blocks two item frames and then nine staircases of your choice for the wheels i'm going with granite andesite and diorite and then you will need your payment items and then your prize items along with that we have just bring a stack of junk items we are going to use those and then nine non stackable items with that being said if you want to pause the video go ahead and do that grab your supplies and then we'll jump right into the build to get things started we are going to build the piston feed tapes so let's go ahead and come around to this corner here we want to go one over four back one two three four four temporary blocks up like this and then have a piston facing up we can remove those from here what we want to do is place a temporary block piston facing up one more temporary block and then another piston facing up like this from here what we're going to do is grab our sticky pistons and let's go ahead and place temporary blocks right here like that Place your sticky pistons facing forward. Again, we can remove those temporary blocks. Now, what we want to do is place two more temporary blocks on top of the sticky pistons. Get your pistons and place pistons on top of those blocks. So we are going to have a two block gap like this between the sticky piston and this one. Remove those. From here, place two temporary blocks like this. Piston facing down, temporary block here, 
piston down, temporary block, and then a piston down. So that is the piston layout all set and ready to go, and from a side view, it should look like this. Now what we want to do is wire up the redstone for the piston feed tapes. And the cool part about this is that the redstone is going to be the same for all three of these. So what I'll do is wire up the first one with you, and then I'll speed up for the other two. So to get things started, we want to come down below, place a temporary block under that sticky piston, a block down below, and then a block to the right. We can remove that temporary block, hit your repeaters, and run a repeater into that bottom piston and set that to four ticks of delay. So one, two, three, and four. Redstone dust on this block. So that redstone will power this sticky piston, and then also the repeater that will power the piston down below. Next, place a temporary block here, a glass block there, and then a glass block right there. Redstone dust on the glass blocks, and then place two more glass blocks like so with redstone dust. So we have ourselves a little tower, and so far it should look like this. Now what we're going to do is grab our blocks once again. We want to place a block underneath this piston here. So that redstone will power this block, which will then power this piston and then a block against our top piston there. Grab your repeaters once again, and run a repeater into that block, and set it to two ticks of delay. So one and two. So there we go, that is the side profile. Now for the final touch, what we're gonna do is place redstone dust on top of this block, on top of that piston, and we will do this later, but we'll set it up now. Place your emerald block right against the side of the piston with your note block on top. Again, we will get to that and we'll set the notes later, but at least we have that in place. Now what I'll do is speed up and do the other two. Once you have all of your piston feed tapes set up, what we can do now is grab the blocks that we are actually going to throw into the feed tape. So again, that is our gold blocks, and then in this case I'm using granite, andesite, and diorite stairs, and I'll explain why I'm using stairs a little bit later on, but let's go ahead and put these in place. So let's start with the gold blocks, and what I like to do is place two right here against that block under the piston, so just like that. And then let's come down below, let's place temporary blocks here, and then we want to place a temporary block here, stair block, temporary block, stair block, temporary block there, stair block, remove these, and then let's go with the andesite, let's place andesite here, and we got to come around to the other side, right there, and then from here all we do is place on top of this back gold block, place your last stair block on top of those ones there. So from the side view, it should look like this. With the piston feed tapes all set up and ready to go, we can now come to the front and finish up the front of the build. So let's go ahead and grab our decorative stair blocks and place stair blocks like this against these bottom blocks, and then blocks upside down under the emerald blocks, and then fill in the sides. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then of course we do want to cover up the front, so let's go ahead and start here and run blocks across the top, just like that. And then we will leave this gap open because that is where the dropper will go to dispense the prizes. But with that, the front of the build is all set and ready to go. Now it's time to set up the payment system. So let's go ahead and grab a block. We want to come over to the left side here and right against this block, place a block there. We can remove this one, get your hopper and run your hopper into the block like that. This is going to be the same payment system that we used for the gambling machine. So all this is, is an item sorter. Now let's go ahead. This hopper is running into that block. We want to place a temporary block against that bottom piston and then place your sticky piston facing forward like that. Get your comparator and running out from this block and on top of the sticky piston. Place your comparator like that. Last block behind that piston. 
Now place a temporary block under that glass block. Block here, a block here, and then a block under the sticky piston. We can remove this, get to redstone dust, place redstone dust on top of the glass block, this block. Now let's go ahead and grab our repeaters and run a repeater into that bottom block there. So that is set up. Now all we do is grab our hopper, place it, look at this block here, place it like that so it is now facing down. And then we do need our chest, so let's go ahead and grab that. We want to run that into the chest to collect the payment. And then from here, we set up the item sorter. So grab those junk items right here, place five of them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then six in this one. Now get your payment items and place one right there. So that is all set up and ready to go. And if we give this a test, we throw it in like that. And then it will go down into the chest below. So there we go. That is the item sorter slash payment system set up. All right, we wired up our piston feed tapes and we wired up the payment system. Now what we need to do is wire up the payment system to the circuit that is actually going to control the piston feed tapes. So let's come on down below and right here under this block where the repeater is running into it, place a temporary block here, block there. We can remove that block right here. Now what we want to do is let's go one, two, three blocks out for now, giving us a total of four like that. Redstone dust. So again, we throw in our payment. That's going to go through the item sorter. The payment will be collected. And at the same time, this repeater is going to power the redstone down below, which is going to power this tiny comparator clock that we're going to make right now. So place one, two comparators right there with redstone dust, and then two more running back. So it should look like that. Now if we give it a test, there you go. You can see our clock. It's staying on. Now with the circuit we're about to wire it up to in just a moment, this is going to give us a pulse of eight. Now I want it to be a little bit longer. And in order to do that, I had to do, I guess, a modified comparator clock. So normally what I would do, I would want 16. So to get 16 pulses out of the circuit that we're going to make, I would make this four like that and redstone dust there. But the issue is if we do it like that, you can see how now the comparator clock, it's not just staying on, it's actually turning on and off. And that's not going to be any good because we do need to wire this up to a circuit that needs to stay on. So to get around this, what I did was I placed comparators just like this. So again, we have our four with our redstone dust. We add a comparator here. And actually, we want to run this into a block dust here and then a comparator facing in. So let me go ahead and give you a view like that so you can see it real quick and make it for yourself. Now, if we go back to the top and do it again, you can see we do have that continuous signal going through. It's not blinking on and off, and that's exactly what we want. Now, as I mentioned, this is gonna give us eight pulses, and by adding this, we are gonna get 11, so that way we can get a couple more rotations out of the piston feet tape. So that is why I chose to do it that way. Now it's time to wire up the circuit that is gonna give us the 11 pulses. And before we do that, I noticed this and we actually need to make that a glass block. So before we continue on, go ahead and make that a glass block with redstone dust. And you'll see why in just a second. So from here, what we're gonna do is run a redstone torch out from that block. And then let's place a temporary block here. We're going to grab our hoppers and place a hopper running into that block like that. So it's running in sideways. Remove that temporary block and then crouch place your second hopper into that one so they are facing each other. Now go ahead and grab one junk item and place it inside the hopper and it'll get locked in there because of this resin torch. And again, the reason why we made this a glass block is because when this is getting powered, we want this to stay open. So because this is a transparent block, this is not going to lock up that hopper. So that's why we're doing that. 
Now from here, what we're going to do is place two blocks like this. We want to run a comparator out from that hopper and then run that comparator into a repeater. We can go ahead and leave that set to one tick and then run that repeater into a block like this and then five blocks going this direction. One, two, three, four, five, and it should finish with this block right here under the piston feed tape. Now get your redstone dust, line these blocks up with the redstone dust, grab your dropper, and we want to line these up with the piston feed tapes. So dropper facing up, skip a block, dropper facing up, skip a block, and dropper facing up. From there, crouch place hoppers into the top of these droppers, like that. From here, what we want to do is run comparators out from these top hoppers. So on this side, crouch place blocks against these droppers like this. Get your comparators once again, turn around, and run your comparators out from the hoppers. And then run these comparators into blocks. Block like that, block like that. And then go ahead and place a block on top of the hopper, so crouch place, so you don't open up the inventory of the hopper. Do the same for all three. Another block here. And then get your redstone dust, place dust on these two blocks. And then grab your repeaters and run repeaters into these blocks here that will go into the piston feed tape. Now that we have that all finished, let's go ahead and grab our non-stackable items and come down to these droppers here that we just set up. And what I chose to do was place three non-stackable items into each dropper with an item that stacks in 64. So this will give us a 75% chance for the piston feed tape to be activated. Because for those who don't know, a non-stackable item gives us a redstone output of three. An item that stacks in 64 gives us an output of one. So if the sword comes up, we would get an output of three, but here we only have two. So this would activate powering that repeater, which would then power the whole piston feed tape here. Now, if the item that stacks in 64 comes up, it will only power this redstone here, and this won't get powered at all, which means this piston feed tape will not do anything. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's finish this up. And one, two, three, and you can change this up to be however you like. This is how I chose to do it. So that's the nice part about this is it is totally customizable depending on how easy or how hard you want to make this. So with that all set up, let's go ahead and give this a test so we can see it in action. We throw in the payments and there is this three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There is that eleven pulse I was talking about. And then, I know we didn't look at the piston feed tapes, but if we throw it in again, we can see all of it in action. So it's kind of cool seeing all of this. It looks complicated, but as you can see, it is a pretty simple build so far. All right, we are on the home stretch. All we need to do now is set up the circuits that will dispense our prize if we actually win. So let's go ahead and come on down below. And remember, I was talking about this not turning on and off. We want it to stay on as a continuous signal that eventually faded out. So this is where this comes into play. We're going to place a block here, three blocks like this, a block up, block here, and then a block up against the redstone torch. Move that. Redstone dust here. Get your repeaters. Place a repeater here, 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 and here. With all of these, we want to set these to a four tick delay, like this. Now go ahead and grab your dropper. You want to come above this block and place your dropper facing up. And then what we're going to do is make an RS snarl latch. Now let's come on down below, look up at this block, and place your dropper facing here. So that way, both of these droppers are facing each other. Now go ahead and open up the top dropper, place one junk item inside, like that, get a glass block, place it above the redstone torch, like this, and then grab a comparator and run your comparator out from that top dropper. Now that will be powered because we do have the item inside, and then run that comparator into a block like this. Get your sticky piston, place your sticky piston facing up, that will extend. Get an observer, place it in this direction, so we have the red dot facing the front of the build, arrow is facing forward. 
and then we want to place a block right here with redstone dust now what we need to do is come back down below real quick and looking at this repeater here get an observer crouch place an observer facing in this direction arrow up red dot up and then redstone dust on top of that observer so that is all set up and ready to go let's go ahead and give this a test we aren't completely done with the circuit yet but we have a good portion of it done so that is going to retract like so and then this won't extend until this is done spinning around so let's see if we can see it there we go it happens pretty quick but once this comes to a stop this observer pops back up and powers this redstone dust here now this is how this is going to work let's see what we have and actually this would be a win this would be a win right here because this is why we have solid blocks and stair blocks so if we come around to this side we want to place a block here a block there get your repeater place a repeater in this gap and a repeater in this gap and leave it all set to one tick so again, once this pops back up, after all of this has stopped, this will power this redstone, and then this redstone will pass through, and will power this repeater, it will power this repeater, and then it will power this sticky piston right here that would be facing up, with our observer facing in this direction, this direction, just like that, and block here with our dropper facing down so let's see if we can recreate this real quick so uh, let's see how we can let's remove this and then for example just so we can see it we're gonna go ahead and place this block back so imagine it just finished spinning and then it goes up, powers all the way through all of these because, again, these are solid blocks. And then that will cause us to win. Now, again, if we hit a stair block, because it's transparent, it's not going to pass through. So even if we have a gold block here, here, and a stair block there, the redstone line is not going to pass through. And then it's not going to power this, which means we're not going to win. With all that said, the redstone for this build is pretty much done now all we need to do is finish up our decorating and then adjust our note blocks and add one more note block so first of all let's go ahead and add in the rest of the floor that way we can stand back and watch these spin around and then place an item frame crouch place it on top of this hopper and display our payment item here which will be the iron ingot and this will be the prize so it will pay out diamonds diamonds go inside now what we need to do is place a temporary block here observer facing this direction like that and then a gold block here and a note block on top and what this gold block will do is actually change the pitch of the note block so let's go ahead and set it to a c which i believe is six times we press it there we go so once this pops up we can get that winning chime so like this and of course, not that many items will pop out, only because I'm using the button here. I just wanted to demonstrate that going off. We can place these back in. And now we need to get back to these note blocks here. So from what I looked up, the slot machines in the casinos, they go off of the key of C. So again, we're going to set this to a C. And what I like about the emerald blocks is that it gives us that digital sound. So let's press it six times. it has that digital sound which I really like so that's six we're gonna make this a G which I believe is 13 10 11 12 13 and then we're gonna make this a high C so that is 18 I believe 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 so that way when all these are spinning around we get those different notes which I think sounds really good and it really does remind me of a casino as my dryer goes off. Let's place that in. And there we go. 
Oh, I love that sound. Yeah, so I think that definitely sounds like a slot machine should. At least as close as we can get it sounding in Minecraft. And let's see if we can actually win again. We won in the beginning. I guess we're not going to get that lucky. Now, when it comes to these blocks here, again, we do have two gold blocks, which means we have two solid blocks. If you want to increase the chances of winning... Oh, there we go. Awesome. Although I'm not sure why you'd want to increase the chances of winning, because, I mean, it is a slot machine. You could add more solid blocks. So, like, you remove that one and make it another solid block. So there's three in this wheel. It's totally up to you. Again, totally customizable. But with that, that is going to bring us to the end of today's redstone tutorial. And there you have everyone, a super fun and functional slot machine for Bedrock Edition. This is the end of today's redstone tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I will see you later.